for those that are listening that may have PFS, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Don't go on PFS forums, and I'll tell you why my reasoning that is. is Giving yourself the optimal testosterone levels will, will give you the results that you deserve and nothing more. Because now you're telling me to trust a doctor when it was a doctor that messed me up in the first place. What would you have told yourself if you could go back and give yourself advice at the start of the TRT journey from where you're at now? So if you're a doctor, uh, for the love of God, stop prescribing this for hair loss. This is the, you, don't, you don't use a hormone medicine for hair loss. It just makes absolutely no sense. So welcome to the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And today with us is Dave Lee and Amir Karkuti. Did I pronounce that right, Amir? That was excellent. Wonderful. Awesome. So Amir is with us to share his story about his um, hair loss endeavors and the product uh, he took for that. As you can read under his name, former PFS sufferer. So that's what we're going to talk about. So um, maybe Amir, share your story first, and then we'll have Dave on to share his thoughts on your um, on your story. Amir? Awesome. Well, first yeah. of all, you guys, thank you for having me. I've been in you guys' group for a long time. Uh, this group saved my life. I want to make that very clear. If it wasn't for the uh, people in this group, the doctors, the practitioners, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at today. So a big thank you, big love for uh, anyone that's in the group that's assisted us. For those that are listening that may have PFS, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. That's number one. So before I continue, uh, I wanted to say that. And with that being said, I wanted to quickly share my story, which is in 2013 when I was dating my, she's my wife now, um, she saw a prescription at my, uh, on my bathroom and she looked at it and she read it and she's like, what is this for? And I said, oh, my doctor told me that since my father had prostate cancer, this would actually reduce the, the effectiveness if I get prostate cancer and I would get to keep my hair. So there was a two, two reasons to take this. And I thought, well, that sounds great. And so I took it. And she looked it up, just being curious. She didn't know anything about it. And she said, you know, we're not, we're not married yet, but if we continue to do the, get to, you know, further our relationship, did you know that if I touch this stuff, I can create deformed babies? And I was like, I, I had no idea. I don't know if there's truth to that or if there isn't, but that scared the living daylights out of me. And I stopped taking it. Fast forward about six months after us dating, we go to Thailand for our first trip. And I could not keep my eyes open. I could not think properly. I, I couldn't walk. She wanted to go out and see the town. And I'm like, honey, I got to stay in bed. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's jet lag. And then I got better the next day. And then the pre following day, I fell straight down to my face, to my food. So I thought I had an autoimmune disorder. I didn't know what was going on. I took it easy, came home. Went to doctors and every doctor said, well, what are you taking any medicine? And I'm, I'm not on anything. And so they're like, well, it must be in your head. It must be something going on. And I could not for the life of me figure out what was going on because I had stopped taking the drug about six months before. And so there was no way to correlate that to. And then my, my, you know, bless my wife's or wife's heart, but my girlfriend at the time went, something is wrong because she knew the person I was. I'm, I'm, I'm a very active person. I own... I'm an entrepreneur. I've written five books. I was a public speaker. I'm not some guy that just sits around at home. I'm constantly busy. So she saw that person and then she saw me wither away to nothing and she could not understand what was going on. So she randomly found a San Diego sexual medicine doctor. He's a world renowned uh, urologist and it happened to be in San Diego where I'm from. And I went to go visit him. They did three tests. They check you out physically to see if there's anything going on mentally and chemically, which is with blood work and all that. And so they, they checked to see if like, you know, I, let me step back. Some things that I had going on, I had no erection. I had no interest to have sex with my, my girlfriend and she was absolutely gorgeous. I just didn't have interest. I mean, I'd rather watch a movie or anything. And that was really odd when you're recent, you know, when you're in a new relationship, not to want to have sex. I wanted nothing to do with it. And I couldn't work out. I used to go to the gym all the time. I, I realized there was a girl working next to me and I went to go change the weights and I went to go do it. And I'm like, oh my God. And I had to go less than what she was putting on. And none of it made sense. So when I went and told the doctor this, 
he was looking at my blood work and looking at everything. And he says, you know, can I ask you a question? Have you ever taken finasteride? And mind you, I didn't, you know, at the time I didn't look at forums. I didn't know what I had. So I said, oh yeah, I took it for five years, doc. Why? And he literally slammed his hand on the, on the, on the table. And he said the F word and said, I'm so sorry, man. Um, I, I think I know what's going on. And he literally word for word stated what was going on with me. He said, look, here's what's, what I'm assuming is happening. When you're looking at your wife undressing, it's like looking at a tree. And that, like, I, I literally got tears in my eyes because I said, yes, that, that is what it is. I, I, I had no differentiation. There, nothing sparked in my head, whether I, whether I saw anything on TV, whether I saw it in, in front of me, it just did not click for me. And so when he said that, I said, you know, there was a part of me that went, this sucks, but there's another part of me that said, great, let's at least find, we figured out what's going on. That's actually good news. And he said, here's what's going to happen with, with what we can do. And at the time, um, and, and I'll go over why that was good, but not good enough. But he put me on Clomid, clomiphene sulfate, um, a, a women's fertility drug for a little bit. It raised my numbers, but it didn't get me to, it didn't actually help that much. Um, I was on it for about a year. It helped with my cognition, I believe. Nothing else really changed from there. And so I asked him if there's anything we can do. And he said, you know, that's the best we can do. So I was not going to give up. I was like, this can't be it. So I ended up going on forums and I'm going to, and as I continue to talk, I want to do it a couple ways. Number one, I want to sprinkle some advice while I talk, because I think it's important uh, to talk about what helped me during my process. And I want to talk about what not to do. So the first thing I did is when I found out I had PFS, I went on forums on PFS forums. I will tell you right now, that's one thing not to do. Don't go on PFS forums. And I'll tell you why my reasoning that is, is you will get a bunch of people that will spew out and, and in their defense, they're, they're, they're hurting and it's a terrible place to be. But if you want to get a solution, you're going to get more depressed there. You're going to get yourself in a situation where you're going to see how devastated people are. They want to commit suicide. Their wives left them. They don't know what's going on. And that's not going to help be helpful. Once you have PFS, know that you have it and there may be solutions, but it's not going to be in those forums. And how I know that is when I got in those forums, I was up till two in the morning looking at things. And my wife, wife or girlfriend at the time is like going, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, I need to figure this out. Well, guess what I was doing? I was raising my cortisol, I was stressing myself out, and I was losing sleep. Now, that's not a direction to go when you want to get help. So, and Dave, I wanted to ask you, uh, and I don't want to talk the whole time. Uh, I'm going to, I want to talk from this perspective, but I know you work with people, and I want you to either let me know if I'm going in the wrong direction or what you've seen when I, with what I'm talking about, um, you know, with anything like that. So please chime in and let me know if any of this is accurate from what you're seeing. But... <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll, so, I'll jump in now for a sec. I mean, my, my reaction yeah, please, is please, often the same as, as your doctor's reaction. It's uh, I, I react in the exact same way. And I guess a couple of questions I had before you, you lead on, just to give more context to me, that the questions that I'm wondering, and I'm sure that people watching will be wondering. Um, so you mentioned you took it for, I'm going to ask three questions. So you mentioned you took it for, for five years. So what dose did you take? I, that's one thing that you know people always want to know. Um, and then... So my, my had, other question is, like, did, did this, sorry, I, took, I think we've got a bit of a lag, yeah, sure. so I'm just going to fire these if all I, if up. If I remember. And then, oh, wait, it's going to speak over each other for a bit. My apologies. Um, so, yeah, so the, the question about the dose, and then I'd also like to know, uh, when, when you mentioned that you had this issue where you kind of, like, face planted in, in Thailand, you just had this instant out of nowhere, were you having any kind of issues like sexual dysfunction, mood disturbances, anything between when you stopped taking it and when that happened? Because you mentioned there was a six-month period. And then the other thing I'd, I'd be curious about is, do you, and um, you might not know this, but do you know what it was the doctor saw in your blood work that made him ask about finasteride? Those are the questions. Sure. Um, the couple things happened. The, when I went to Thailand, the first thing I noticed was I just didn't have energy and I was for, forgetful. My wife would tell me something and she literally thought she was in a twilight zone. She would say, honey, we're going to dinner at six o'clock. I said, great. We'd have a discussion. What are we going to eat? You know, where do you want to go? Do you want to go to Thai food? Do you want to go whatever? And then three hours later, I'm like, what are we doing for dinner? 
And she's like, what are you talking about? We had this discussion. So we're both going, this is insane. And, and, and it was that bad. My memory loss was that bad. Um, my sexual side effects didn't come on till a little bit later. I was so exhausted. I just wanted to go to bed. I wasn't depressed at that time. It wasn't depression. I was just tired. What came a little bit after the six month is, and I attributed my, my like lack of sexual, sexual desire. I couldn't get erections. I mean, and I, and I said, obviously it's because I'm exhausted. I have an immune deficiency. So of course I'm not going to have an erection. I didn't put, I didn't have the pieces together. Um, erectile dysfunction happened. Um, I couldn't get it up. I couldn't think of getting it up. So it didn't even cross my mind. I didn't even know I had an erectile dysfunction issue because I didn't think about sex. So I didn't know which one came first. Um, then what started happening, which was really interesting, I started to have really weird ideas of how I wanted to kill myself. What I mean by that is I would have these like really disturbing ways where I would say, I'll give you a really good example. Uh, and it wasn't just wanting to kill myself. I wanted to like harm others. And I would have these like really strange thoughts. I was at my mom's house and she's from Afghanistan. And when you go there, they will constantly feed you. And I'm sitting there and my mom, my mom says, um, do you want to go get seconds? I said, no, I'm not hungry, mom. She said, please, you haven't tried this. My brain went and saw a pen on the side of the table. I said, you know what? If I grab this pen and I stab her in the neck, she won't, she won't ask me anymore about getting seconds for dinner. And that's when I went, holy, holy crap, something is wrong with my brain. I, I, it was so disturbing. Then I knew that I didn't want to do it, number one, which is good news. And secondly, it was so disturbing that I knew something was now getting wrong with, something was wrong with my brain. It went from that to then periodically when I'm driving, I would have these thoughts of like wanting to off myself again. And they were very creative ways. It wasn't just, I'm depressed. I want to keep. The only thing that saved me was the fact that my thoughts were so profoundly disturbing that I knew that I didn't have to listen to them. That was the only reason. Like if they were a little bit disturbing where I said, I'm a loser, I'm an idiot, I may have believed those thoughts. They were just so disturbing that I didn't really care to go. I was like, okay, this is that crazy thought again. Okay, I got to kind of chill. Um, I took, of, I think if I remember, it was 10 years ago. I think it was five milligrams split into four. And then I took them daily. I think that's what my doctor told me to take. Mm -hmm. So I was taking like one and one point some odd. And then he told me, and then I also take, I took dutasteride as well at some point, which he said, you don't have to take every day. You can take it. I don't remember what I did with that one, but uh, I remember it was both dutasteride and finasteride, not at the same time, but I was, I was taking them at some point. So it took about, I think, finasteride the majority of the time. Right. So, and going back, okay, going back to what I was saying with the, uh, the forums, I, I ended up volunteering at the doctor's office. And one of the biggest things I realized people, I knew that people were on forums and I'll tell you why, and that they were overthinking this way too much. When I would ask them what symptoms they, people have, they would use words like, I'm noticing I have penile shrinkage. I'm having muscle waste fatigue. And that's, you know, people don't talk like that. That's people who are on forums and going, oh my God, I have this. I'm not saying that you're not having this, but what I'm saying is that you're being very heavily informed by what you're reading. And at some point, educate yourself. I'm not saying don't educate yourself. I'm not saying don't look at what, what, what's happening, but at some point, the benefit starts losing its efficacy and you got to start going into healing yourself and solutions. And again, one of the ways that I found finding solutions, what I ended up doing for myself is I said, you know, bodybuilders, they have, they deal with hormones. And my doctor told me, you know, it's a hormone, you know, you messed up your DHT and your 5AR receptors. So I started looking into it and I realized bodybuilders a lot of times have issues with this. And so I went to bodybuilding forums instead of PFS forums. And I said, well, if they have erectile dysfunction, how do they fix it? And a lot of them said it helped to be on a, a testosterone and things like that. So that, that happened <clears throat> about a few years back. Uh, and then I went on testosterone. And then the guy I went to was a really famous doctor in Los Angeles. I'm not going to say any names, but he was putting me on AIs had me doing 200 milligrams, one, one shot a week. 
I was losing my mind. I started getting that. That was no better than when I had PFS, to be honest with you. I was getting anxious. I was freaking out. I didn't feel right. And I'm like, this is supposed to help me out. And then I saw a, uh, a video with he's, he doesn't really do videos with, uh, with you, with all of us anymore. What, what was his name? Um, he, he did a video on AIs with you guys. And I went, Oh, okay. This is the guy I need to follow. And I ended up, ended up finding your group. I found a doctor that was Neil Rousier trained and now I'm on testosterone cream. And now, we're, now the world is, is a very different uh, space and I'm happy to answer anything as to where I'm at now. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Dave. Yeah. I'll, I'll fire off a couple. I think one point that I'd like to just circle back on and emphasize, you made an excellent point in terms of these, these groups and forums are, are very useful for education, but beyond education, people need to see a practitioner. Um, I think a lot of the time people come to groups and forums looking for a diagnosis, and it is exactly how you described it is the epitome of the, the blind leading the blind. And it's a, it's a lot of people who are genuinely suffering and a lot of other people who genuinely mean well. Um, and that's the part of it that I think is fantastic in terms of it being a community but it can definitely do more harm than good. And I think that that's really a really important point. Um, I'm just going to ask a bunch of questions because, I mean, I, and I think you should continue talking as, as long as you feel the need because you're, you're, you're a great storyteller. I mean, this is a, this is a fantastic story for people to hear. So the, the questions that I think most people are going to want to know that I want to know is talk about your timeline of your recovery from starting your cream. So what was that experience like? And then how long have you been on the, the cream now total? Where are you at now? Like, how are you, like, have you 100% recovered? Like, I know that when I recovered from my issues, which are completely different, I, I got to about 97, 98%. Like, did you get to 100? Do you still have lingering issues? Like, what, what's your situation now? And, and how has it been over the period of your treatment? Sure. So <clears throat> I I started about two and a half years ago, starting with shots. And, you know, it started with the 200 milligrams that didn't help with AI. I got that removed. And then I went to doing shots twice a week and a less amount. I think I went to 150 or 140 at the time and started, went to a lower dose. Then I, I went to my doctor who gave me transcrotal cream 20% um, and it's 200 milligrams. And I, I do 100 milligrams in the morning and 100 milligrams in the afternoon. Uh, mind you, just to step back a little bit, I did not have an erection for about three years. I had, I started to have sexual thoughts, came in and out, but it it, it would not correspond, you know. I and and I don't know. And again, I wasn't on uh, Clomid. I wasn't on anything. There was, I didn't know what else to be on. I just went on with my life the best I could. Um, when I had sex with my wife, I mean, I have a daughter now. Uh, it was, I was on. Uh, I was taking uh, Viagra, 100 milligrams to just have sex with my wife. There was no connection with my wife. It was very robotic. It was very like, I'm doing this to have a kid. There was no romance. There was no, it was just like, get it done. And, and while I was, I was having sex, it was surreal because my brain was thinking about work and what can I watch later this afternoon and when is this going to be done? And so it was, it's absolutely terrible experience. Um, and then about two years ago, about six to eight months after I was on transcrotal cream, I was in the car with my wife and I had an erection. Didn't think about it. Didn't have, a, 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 like, it wasn't like I was thinking about sex. And I looked at, turned to my wife who was driving. I said, honey, I have an erection. And she's like, what? I'm like, well, yeah, I'm having an erection. And I was just so ecstatic about it. This was insane because of the fact that it just, my body just somehow connected. Um, it was about the eighth to a year mark where I had the desire to have sex with my wife, where that feeling came back where it was, I didn't have a choice. I wanted to have sex with her. It wasn't like, like, you know, like I, I, I it's been years since I had that experience where like, you don't have to go, Oh, my wife hasn't had sex with me in, in three months. Maybe I should try to do, you know, have sex with her. It's honey. I'm horny. Like, let's go. Um, it took about a year, realistically. It took about, for me, six to eight months for me to have my erection. About a year where now I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. If she gives me, if she kisses me, or like she hugs me, I will be turned on. And I never thought I would get that back, and I have it back. So a few things that happened. I was 165 pounds for many years. I couldn't 
gain weight. I'm 179 pounds now. I'm very muscular. Um, here's uh, another thing I wanted to uh, share with you guys. That's very important is testosterone is incredibly powerful, but what makes it more powerful is you have to have the mental band. You have to have less stress in your life. You have to, you can't be stressed and have testosterone to think everything's going to fix it. How do I know that? I have friends that don't have PFS, but they're, they're stressed at work and they can't get erections. Now, how do you explain that? If it's, if it's, and the problem I hear all, a lot of people say is it has to be PFS. And I go, well, what's going on with your day to day? I'm stressed out. I'm going through a divorce. Da, 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 da. And they're telling me all this stuff. I'm like, well, hold on. You have too many variables to blame it on PFS. And that's one of the things that I have to make sure they say, well, I'm overweight. I I'm, I'm stressed out work. I don't eat well. I don't sleep well. It's PFS. And it's like, look, it, it may or may not be, I'm not saying that, but cut out as many variables as you can and then have the discussion and see where you're at. And so that's one thing that I realized at the time, again, I, di I didn't, I wasn't on forums. I was in the best shape of my life. I was an entrepreneur. So my variables were very limited when I was going through what I was going through. I knew something was wrong because I was healthy. I was mentally uh, fit. I was physically fit. I was psychologically fit. So for those that, and, and again, it's kind of an issue. And I, I, and I have a lot of tremendous feeling for people that have PFS because it's hard to be mentally fit when you're going through PFS. It's hard to be physically fit. But I will tell you to the best of your ability, if you can't go work out, go on a walk. If you can't walk 20 steps, go take 10 steps. When you're going to bed, don't have a phone in front of you. Put on some meditation music for a little bit. Spend time talking to your wife. F find spaces for yourself to put yourself in the most productive way that you can get yourself to be healed because it'll make your journey easier. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm telling you that was one of the best things I could have done for myself because I, as, as, as I mentioned before, I still, um, I still volunteer for, for people and the things that they tell me, whether they have PFS, PFS or not, you're going to be in a bad space. If you're eating trash, like trash, you're going to be in a bad situation. Don't do it. Clean up your diet. Don't eat processed foods. It, it helps. It helps to your recovery. And, and, and Dave, I, again, I, I don't know if you guys agree or disagree, but that stuff was a very big part of my healing on top of being on testosterone replacement therapy. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in there. That's something that I've, I've actually got a couple of lectures going up on the channel very shortly about this. And a lot of the subjects I've been speaking about at Silverback have been on this. Uh, my friend, Ali Gilbert, who makes videos on the channel, her and I just got together and, and made a, a, a whole class collaborating on this. And I think that one of the, the biggest issues that guys have with TRT, whether it's doing it for whatever reason, physical reasons, mental health reasons, PFS reasons, is that they expected to do the work for them and they also expect it to be this panacea. And I think the, the most important thing that guys need to understand is that giving yourself the optimal testosterone levels will, will give you the results that you deserve and nothing more. And a lot of the time guys deserve to have low libidos because as you said, they're, they're stressed out of their skulls. They've, they've got issues going on that would impact a man who's not on TRT, who has healthy testosterone levels, it would impact his libido as well. And I think the idea that testosterone is just going to make you this like bulletproof, hyperandrogenic male 24-7, regardless of what go is going on, is nonsense. It's just going to make you the man that you're supposed to be based on the inputs and outputs that you, you do in life. Um, and I think one of the most important things that people do during their healing is it's what they do, not what they take. And... I think a lot of the time people hyperfixate on, oh, I want to take this supplement, I want to take this medication, I want to change my protocol by XYZ. And as a result of that, they completely neglect what they're doing with the other 23 hours and, and 55 minutes of the day. And that's the stuff that adds up the most. That's the stuff that makes the biggest impact. So I often recommend to guys that they're in a situation where they don't know what what, what to do. And I think that you know th this, would, this would resonate for guys who are on the PFS journey wherever they're at is – Focus on the things that you can do to look after yourself better because they will help overall, even if they only help by 5 or 10%, because otherwise they can move you in the wrong direction if you neglect them or self-destruct. I, um, I have a couple of questions I'd love to get your take on. Um, one question would be, 
what message would you give directly to someone who is maybe thinking about, I don't know, using something like topical dutasteride or something like this, something that is the idea of having your cake and eating it too. And then my second question, just to follow up on that is, what advice would you give to someone who has PFS, who's just started TRT and they're looking down the barrel of a you know six to 12 month recovery? What would you have told yourself if you could go back and give yourself advice at the start of the TRT journey from where you're at now? Okay. This is, th that's a great, that's actually a really good question. I think it's valuable as well. Um, my mentor um, and psychiatrist, Dr. Bill Pettit, uh, once told me that, you know, I want you to imagine, he, he gave a beautiful metaphor, which I, I, I use uh, periodically, which is, you know, if the, there's, let's say you're in a room and it's pitch black and you're walking around trying to find your way around and you're stumbling and you, there's a table and you, you hit a table and you turn around and you sounds like you hit something. There's glass that you can hear that's breaking while it's pitch black and you turn on the lights and you look around and you go, Oh my God, I broke a table. I broke a, a vase. I, there's a, there's a chair that's broken. There's two ways that you can look at that situation. Number one, be upset that you broke a bunch of stuff in a room while it was dark or number two, be grateful that the lights are on. And so for those that are in this community and you're getting on testosterone, the lights are on. You have two ways of looking at this situation. You can either go, how terrible that I went through all this sh stuff for many years and I lost all this time. I lost, you know, I lost time with my wife and my kids and whatever it is. Or you can be grateful that your life is about to begin again and you can start fresh. And I will tell you, um, I went through that moment, even with TRT, that I, 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 I was upset at myself that I took a drug many years ago. And I was upset at myself that I was such an idiot. I trusted my doctors and how dare they. I was upset at the pharmaceutical company. And I realized I wasn't serving me. And I realized that there are people out in the world that want to help you. And even those doctors were ignorant and they weren't doing it because they wanted to, you know, hurt me or whatever. There's just... I, I, I had to forgive them and I had to forgive myself. That's number one. Honestly, forgive them and forgive yourself. The second thing is calm down, relax. This is a long journey. In other words, the minute you get on testosterone, if you have a good practitioner, set it and forget it. Do what they say and go back to your life. Not do what they say, and now start to write. My doctor said this. What do you think? My doctor wants me to do this. Oh, I'm thinking about switching in, in, a, in a month. What do you think about this? I'm, not, I'm feeling a little bit off. What do you... Stop. If you have a good practitioner, and I know this is difficult to do, I'll tell you why it was difficult for me. Because now you're telling me to trust a doctor when it was a doctor that messed me up in the first place. I understand that. That was a very hard thing for me to get over is I'm going to give my full trust now to another doctor when not that long ago, this doctor said, take this pill and it'll stop your hair from growing. It'll help your prostate cancer. So there is this like dichotomy. There is this issue that happens. But I will tell you, if you're in the right hands with people like Dave Lee and some of the doctors in this group that are that that know what they're doing, let them do the heavy lifting for you. And when you feel off, have a discussion with them. As, the, as your practitioner and doctor, and then go back to life. Because at the end of the day, what we want to do when we have PFS is we want to live. We want to go back to living. So why would you stop that until you're fixed? It makes no sense. In other words, continue living as you continue to heal, as you continue to go in the right direction, as you are grateful for seeing the light that you didn't see years ago or months ago. And relax. Relax. This will be a process and know that you're in good hands. And what that means now at that point, here's what's good news is stop getting on the forums. Start looking at ways to change your diet. Start looking at ways that you can be healthier. You have your new life. And you know what's going to be crazy? This is going to be crazy. I'm, I don't want to say I'm glad I had PFS, but if it wasn't for PFS, I would have probably never been on testosterone. And I'm a new man. I'm a better man now than I was five years ago. I'm a better man now, 44 years old, because I'm educated with my hormones. I'm educated with my health. I'm educated with my, what I'm putting in my mouth. I'm educated about my psychology. You're going to be a better man now.
you've you've turned a new leaf. This is the way you're going to be a better person. And what a wonderful time to be alive now because you have now the resources, the people helping you, and now the support that you wouldn't have had if you weren't on this journey and you weren't listening on this call. So that that's what I would say to people. And I hope that makes sense. Yeah, nice words. I think if, if Stephen clips that, that's one of the best clips on the channel, period. 100%. Yeah. I think that I think that that was one of the best things that someone could listen to, not even about PFS, just people starting at TRT in general. Like, I think that was, that was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. True. Oh, thanks yeah. dude. Thank you. I just like that, that thanks man. Yeah. I'm so, I'm, I'm so glad you're feeling uh, much better because thanks, it really sounds like you were in a very bad place at one moment there. And it also sounds like I'm just going to chime in and out on that before we get you to make a comment. Like, I, I think it also sounds like you, you've come out of this very, very, I don't want to use the word enlightened because I think that that has, you know, people will, will perceive that as meaning something else. But it, it sounds like you, you've come out of this very wise and very, you've integrated what happened very well into a positive thing, which which is something that, you know, when I went through my stuff, it, it took me a long time to do it. And it sounds like you've, you've got a really, healthy perspective on it and it also sounds like when you speak that you're very passionate about helping others with this which is fantastic 100 percent, 100 percent. i will tell you a couple of the things that that are useful for men that are struggling <clears throat> number one if you have pfs and you're married or you have a girlfriend be honest and direct with them if you something is wrong sexually don't hide it and there's a quote by by a philosopher that i actually put in one of my books and and it says, take a deep breath and tell us your deepest, darkest secret so we can wipe out, wipe our brow and know that we're not alone. Here's the thing. The most manliest thing you can do is be vulnerable and honest with others, with men and women. Stand up in your strength and say, this is what's happening to me. And you know what you'll end up finding out is they may not have the same condition as you, but they may say, I have depression. I have this. I, I just found out I had cancer and I didn't tell anyone. What you will start to do is give other people permission to be real as well. It is profound when you step into that realness, what, what other people aren't saying in the world because they're afraid. So if you have PFS, be, be proud in your strength and say, this is what's happening to me. This is something that's really interesting when I went around telling people I had this. I ended up putting, I have, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a coach. I did executive coaching and I worked at a recovery center for five years. I wrote a book on how to be a better coach. And this is interesting. Out of all the parts of my book about how to be a coach and how to get other clients, yada, yada, there was one paragraph where I talked about PFS and that's still the most popular thing people want to talk about is the pain and struggle I went through, not the fact that they can make more money or they can get clients and all the stuff that the book is about. It's that one single paragraph. And they said, and I, I got floods of email of people saying, I'm going through this. I'm going through a divorce. I'm going through that. I lost all my money. People want to know that you're like them. People want to know that they're also, that the pain you're going through, they may be going through too. And that's why this community is amazing. We get to share our pain. We get to share our struggles and we get to share our success stories. That's what makes this incredible. That's why I think men on TRT, why I like TRTs, I'm more assertive. People think I'm aggressive. I'm not aggressive. I'm assertive. I tell people where I stand now. That's an incredible gift to be able to do. Before I was, I was like, oh, someone's doing this. Let's not bother them. Now I'm like, no, yes, let me tell you where I'm at. I stand in my conviction. I'm proud of that. So people who have PFS, stand in your conviction. Tell your wife. She doesn't know what you're going through. When you don't have sex with her, she has a right to know what's going on. You know, if she, if she, you know, my wife, thank God, knew something was wrong, but there's a lot of women out there that think that you're cheating on them. You're not interested in them anymore. They're, you're, you're not interested in them. Even if they're like, hey, honey, you want to go on a walk? No, I'm not interested. And they're going... The guy that I knew six months ago, a year ago, this is not the same guy. So it's your obligation to tell them. It's your obligation. I ended up telling my, my, one of my closest friends who's a pharmacist, and guess what he says? Oh, I have, I, yeah, I, I had a erectile dysfunction. I'd... I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me? He goes, well, I was embarrassed. 
I went and told another friend what I'm going through. And he, he said the same thing. I'm like, what you are, you are on finasteride. He goes, yeah, but you know, it's not something, you know, we really talk about. Well, it should be, it should be something we talk about. There are men struggling and we need to be, we need to be banding together. This is something we need to be talking about. If it's not PFS, it may be something else. It may be marriage issues. Like we need to start manning up. This is one of the issues we have in our society. We're scared to speak up. And I think that's going to be incredibly valuable. So that's number one is to speak your truth about what you're going through. Don't be afraid to say it. And that is actually really healing because it gets it off our chest. And that's why I reached out to you guys to say, I want to speak my truth to you guys, because for those that are listening, I hope you take, take, take this, uh, you know, with a grain of salt and really hear what I'm saying. It's really, really going to be important for us to, to have our voice be heard because I could have sat quietly and said, Ooh, that's embarrassing. I didn't have sex with my wife for three years. I didn't have erections. I didn't have this. It's the truth. And many of us are, were suffering because of that. And now we have a solution. Um, that was phenomenal, man. Like you, you, yeah. you shared that really, really beautifully. And you, you can tell that you've thought about this a lot and, and that there was a lot of intention in what you said. I think that was phenomenal. And I, I really hope that this video gets out to all the people that you hope will see it. Um, because I think that like for, for someone who, who is struggling in those forums, cause I've seen the forums, um, I've seen the guys come out of the forums and, and I think everything that you said is exactly what everyone in those forums needs to hear. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I was one of the forum guys. I, I get it. And I've been there. I've done it. And again, I, I, I went towards the light. I had no other option. I mean, it was either that. I have guys that are still in those forums after I've told them, get off of the forums. A year later, they're calling me saying, hey, I found out that in India, they're doing coffee enemas. Some guy got cured. And I'm thinking about going to India. And I'm like, stop. Just stop, man. Stop. Because, And again, I get it. I get it. You want to be fixed. You want to be cured. But take a deep breath. Go to a practitioner. Go to a doctor that knows how to deal, work with hormones. There's a lot of them that don't. Uh, please understand that. So go to a community like the TRT community. Uh, and, and maybe Stephen can send a link on, on this where they can look at all the doctors that are there. These doctors have been vetted. They've, they've dealt with this. I've, I've gone through many doctors myself. I've gone through psychologists, urologists, uh, internal medicine. I went through every single type of doctor, neurologist to see if something's wrong with my brain. Make it simple. You know, for me, I don't know why testosterone cream helped. I've spoken to, I've, I've referred a lot of doc, uh, patients to my doctor uh, that have PFS. They've gotten help dramatically with it. Um, it's, it's, I have to say, this is the only cure I, I possibly know for me. It's anecdotal because it's just me, but boy, did it change my life. It changed my life. I look at that bottle now. I, 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 I swear to you guys that I look at that bottle and every time I look at that bottle, I say, I get to start a brand new day today again. And I look at it. It's a blue bottle. It's this big. And every before it's almost like, it's almost like a ritual for me now. It's like my morning prayer. I look and say, this allows me to go to work. This allows me to have the best time of my life with my child. This allows me to be a father and a mother. I'm a father, a husband, and a, and a, and a, and a business owner. This thing gives me life. And so like, I don't take this stuff lightly. And that's why I do take care of my body. That's why I take care of my mental well-being because I got a new lease on life and I get, I get exhausted by these guys. Uh, I have a really close friend of mine who um, is, is, I don't want to get too deep into him, but he's, he, he, he saw my body and the changes and he goes, well, of course you're on testosterone. This is, you know, you're cheating. Well, he ended up getting on it. Didn't change his diet. Didn't change the way he sleeps. He's metabolically, metabolically uh, a mess. He's overweight, his guts out. And he's saying, oh, I think testosterone is making me bloated. And he's changing his protocol constantly. And I'm looking at him and I'm, I'm 11% body fat. I'm lean and I'm fit. And I'm like, and I told him, I said, do you think it's a testosterone or do you think that it's because of the metabolic syndrome that you're, you you have? And now he's on a CPAP machine. He's not sleeping because his neck got too big. Guys, like you have a new lease on life. Don't mess around with this stuff. This is powerful stuff. You got a Ferrari. Stop putting crappy gas in it. Like this is it. You've, you found, you found your strength. And, and, it, and, it, and it really does bother me when I see people that are in our groups that are constantly changing their protocol and all that stuff. And when I say something that's free and simple, 
sleep better, eat better, and work out, uh, we can do that later. I want to find the magic pill from a, from Dr. You know, from Dr. DeVos or you know Dave Lee or something. Stop. So I'm sorry about the ranting, but I think this is really important to say. Yeah, don't apologize. Nothing to apologize about, man. No, this is this has been fantastic. I think that I think so many people are going to benefit from uh, hearing this, and I think that there is so much value in you sharing your story very openly and compassionately and, and being vulnerable with it. But also, like, I mean, Stephen and I can see, and I'm sure everyone else can see watching, is like you, you're clearly doing very well. Yeah. So for the people who are watching this who, who are feeling awful with, with PFS, I think that this is a fantastic thing for people to see because you're walking the walk in terms of being like, no, it does get better because you can hear it in your voice that you are genuinely doing well. That's fantastic. 100%. 100%. And, and, and don't be afraid to reach out to Dave Lee and all the, all the practitioners. That's what they're here for. Reach out for them, get the help you need. If you know, they're there, we have, they have doctors from everywhere from here to all the way from your, where are you, Australia? Yeah. I've got a clinic in Australia now and, and there's, there's people who are friendly with this topic now all through Europe, all through the UK. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So people can, people can get proper, prescription treatment access to proper prescribed like the cream that you're talking about it is available in most countries now and it can be medically supervised and prescribed for these guys absolutely yeah that's 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 a gift and again you guys this is this is a gift if if, if anyone is struggling you're in the right place you're 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 on your way to, to to heal take your time be kind to yourself be honest be vulnerable and just be patient. Be patient. In due time, you will get better. And don't. And, and another thing, don't wait to get better in the sense of, am I getting better now? Wait, is it working? Is it working? Don't do that. Just set it and forget it and go mm -hmm. on with your life. Go get a haircut. I had a guy that didn't get a haircut for a year and a half I spoke to because he was so depressed. Go get a haircut. Go out and go. Don't, 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 um, don't punish yourself by sitting in your uh, in your basement, not going out with your friends. Don't do that. Go, be, go back to being social. I know it's hard because you, you want to when you when you have PFS and depression. The name itself, depression comes from being depressed. Where you're depressed, where you're 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 going internal. And I get that, but do the best you can to express yourself and go back out in the world. Go back and and and, and do life, and 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 treat yourself good. And, and do the best you can. You'll get there. I promise you. I will promise you from someone that was severely messed up with this drug. Severely. I promise you there is hope. Thank you so much, Damien. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you so guys much for, uh, for having that, wonderful. So we've got this lag. I'm just going to say what I'll say and then I'll, I'll let you take, take it home. But I think that without any question, you've, I, I'm sure you've, you've saved a bunch of lives by making this video, man. 100%. Well, I appreciate it. I, I really appreciate it. And I hope I do. And I hope uh, people become more aware of this devastating, disgusting drug. Any doctor that's giving it to kids 20 years old is, is, is please, if you're a doctor on, on, and watching this, stop giving this drug. My doctor who's retired now, who was a family friend of mine, loved the guy. I gave him all the stuff and he actually was open enough to, to read it. And I ended up finding out he stopped prescribing it to people that are under 65 years old. And if they were, unless it was, you know, specifically for prostate or whatever, he stopped giving it for hair loss. So if you're a doctor, uh, for the love of God, stop prescribing this for hair loss. This is the, you don't, you don't use a hormone medicine for hair loss. It just makes absolutely no sense. And the problem with this is what I'm realizing is if it's working, then that's even worse. That's saying that you're blocking DHT in order for this to work. So the very thing that makes it work is the most devastating part of this drug. We're yeah. blocking a 5AR. Uh, it's an inhibitor and in stopping DHT production for us to 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 stop having our uh, to to grow our hair mean, makes absolutely no sense. That's like getting on a cancer drug so you can uh, getting on a cancer drug so you can have like lighter skin or dark like for some something so trivial. It, it makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. Be bald. Look at me and Dave. I'm happy with it. I'm bald. I mean, I love my life, man. You know what? I'd rather be bald and have sex with my wife, go on jogs, go on hiking, work out, be an entrepreneur. I didn't realize this, you know? And again, I, uh, you know, if, if you're worried about your vanity, let me tell you something. You're going to be worried a lot more when you can't have sex. 
you be worried a lot more when you can't go to the gym because you're taking this poison. You're going to be worried a lot more when you can't even keep your eyes open when you're an engineer or you're a doctor or you're a, a pilot. I'm telling you right now, that's going to be the least of your worries. You're not going to be, be able to go to a bar to show your pretty hair because you're going to be exhausted and devastated. Please listen to me. This stuff is poison. Do not take this drug. All right. That's amazing, man. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. All right. So um, let's wrap this one up. So for everyone interested um, in our Facebook group, TRT and Hormone Optimization, you can, you can find Amir there, uh, Dave as well, as um, well as a lot of other practitioners. So depending on where you live, just uh, let us know where you are and uh, we'll get you help from in your region. All right. So thank you, Dave. Thank you, Amir. And uh, talk to you next time, guys. Thank you. you guys for having me. Thank you both. If you wish to support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. And check out the links in the description of all the things I'm associated with. My ebook on compounded testosterone cream, multiple workout programs, Mizumi skincare, online pharmacy NP Labs, and a list of Amazon links to the supplements we recommend.